Hey, what's up, India folks? G the Hat Guy here, back at you with another awesome video here. For this video, uh, we're going to be discussing uh, top five uh, hat secrets that most don't know about. Okay, unless you're in the uh, hat business or you have some sort of behind the scenes knowledge about hats, whatnot, you would not know uh, the things or some of the things that we're going to be discussing today. Okay. Uh, so, uh, when you watch this video to the end, okay, uh, you'll be more familiar with some of these insights. We have a little bit more uh, broader knowledge uh, and gain some uh, more enlightenment about our beloved hats, okay? Uh, so, watch the video to the end. Subscribe, like, share with others with similar uh, hat interests, okay? All right, so let's get right into it. The first thing we're going to be discussing in this video today is uh, called shellac. Okay, how many people knows what shellac is? Is go ahead and raise your hands up. Let, let, let me see that. Go, go ahead and throw some comments down for me. If you know what it is, if you don't know what it is, put it in the comments. Okay, and some of the other things I'm going to be discussing today. All right, give the video a thumbs up and put your comment down. Let me know if you know what shellac is. So basically, shellac is a raisinous uh, uh, secretion. Okay, uh, that is found and gotten from the uh, lac bug that are found on trees in uh, certain parts of Asia, okay? So it's a type of resin that is found, you know, uh, from the secretion of bugs, bug waste, basically, okay? And then uh, they'll add some um, ethanol or alcohol, typically ethanol in the hat business to it, uh, some might add alcohol, okay, and then mix it, and there's a certain combination, ratio, mix, and that type of stuff. Uh, so they use it as a stiffener in the hat business to stiffen hats. So when you see your hats, you know, it's it's got a heavy stiff to it or a softer stiff, medium stiff, that kind of thing. Typically in the hat business, uh, they've been using it, you know, for decades, what, now in the hat business, shellac. So that's what they use. Now, there, there are some other uh stiffener products that have come available uh you know since over the years as well um but shellac is still a main option uh for the uh you know small scale hat maker uh like myself you know and others out there you know i'm a hat retailer i sell hats from some manufacturers and also uh make my own hats okay custom hats uh but yeah for a small production uh, hat maker or whatnot they typically it will come in like a spray bottle or you could get them in uh like a gallon you know like a big gallon maybe like 32 ounce gallon 64 ounce gallon and that type of thing is already mixed up and then uh you know you will follow these steps and and apply it to to your uh straw hat like this one that i have here or uh your felt hat uh that i have there um to stiffen it, you know, and then you let it sit, you know, dry, it dries pretty quickly, that type of thing. And, and then you continue with the, with the hat making process. Now with the huge, uh, manufacturers, what now they, they run it through the machines. They have specific machines that, that distribute and shoot out the, uh, shellac onto the, uh, the hat bodies, what now, uh, you know, whether it's uh, hat bodies already come, you know, that they, they pre stiffen those hat bodies, you know, what not, uh, so say for like your Western style hats, for instance, you know, or typically that will come like pre, uh, pre stiffened already from the factory, you know, so that's what they would do. Like your dress type hats, something like this, like this, uh, velour hat here, uh, typically would not be pre stiffened yet, you know, so it'd be up to the, uh, hat maker to go ahead and, and stiffen that for themselves, whatnot. Um, so yeah. Basically, uh, shellac, that's what shellac is. Like I said, throw in the comments, let me know if you, um, what shellac, if you know what shellac is, excuse me. So uh, in the meantime, make sure you subscribe, like, share the video. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Really helps the channel. Uh, so the next thing would be hand shaping. Okay. You can actually shape, you know, um, uh, and you know, a lot of small, small scale, uh, hat makers, you know, we're able to, you can shape the, the hats, you know, um, with your hand actually. Okay, all you need is, uh, you know, all you need is, uh, you know, some steam. You know, you apply some steam to it, okay, to the uh, straw or the felt, okay. So once you're getting, concluding the process, you pretty much, you know, put a sweatband on, everything else is done, you know, um, 
you know, then, uh, you know, you want to shake the hat, the open crown. When it's still around, when the dome is still around on there, on the crown, then you apply some steam. It's something that comes with expertise. It's not something that a newbie can just dive into. You know, you have to get, have some training, you know, so you don't ruin it, whatnot. So you can shape it uh, with your hands, whatnot. You can put a center dent like this one. You can put a dent right there, you know, the pinches, you know, whatnot in the front. You can do all that type of stuff, you know. Um, yeah, so with you can change the shape if you want to. You steam it. You pop it back out. You know, reshape it a different shape. Maybe if you have just a center dent on the top, you want to do like a, uh, a pork pie or something. You know, you steam it again, and then you follow the process. You know, there, there's another process to it, which I will come to here. And then you you can do that. You can reshape it. Okay. So hand shaping. That's number two. Number three uh, will be steam and heat. I probably should have made this one number one <laughs> on my little list. That's what I had. But steam and heat. This is a portable uh, uh, steamer you're looking at here. Okay. Uh, this is a portable steamer uh, with the large uh, hat manufacturers. They have their own steaming machines that they use, whatnot. Um, so, yeah. Um, you know, they, they have like the large size industrial machines for the large manufacturers but this is portable you know i'm a small scale hat maker so i i use this portable steamer whatnot uh it's made in europe and uh that's what it does you know it shoots out steam you know better than your uh iron or most most other steamers out there whatnot this is what i use this comes in different sizes you know, there's some that are much you know about twice or three times the size they actually stand on their own and they uh and they, uh, you know, shoot up, you know, they hold several gallons of, uh, of water, whatnot in there, you know, so, but this is the one that I use, you know, uh, it's portable, you know, uh, it, it serves the needs that I need it to serve. So again, steam and heat that, that, that's what, that's what we need. So steam, and then you see the iron right there, you know, basically I use that, you know, that's where my heat comes from a combination, you know, of the steam bear with me i'm recording with one hand and try to show you with another hand so so i have my steam and heat you know in one right there combination basically okay uh, so let that's uh what that's number three okay so that's number three secret again while you're watching the video if you're learning something getting some new knowledge make sure that you uh like share the video with others okay uh they have similar hat interest okay um Okay, so number four, okay, would be what we call the uh, the hat block here, right here in my hand. Okay, we have the hat block. Okay, this is an older hat block here, um, whatnot. But basically, this is needed for shaping. This is, you know, they come in different sizes. Okay, they come in different sizes, and typically the sizes are printed on them. You see, this one says uh, seven and a quarter there. Okay, this is an older uh pretty old uh hat block i have here um so uh i do have some newer ones as well but it's an older one you know what not just want to kind of show you uh demonstrate for you here so yeah uh like i said you know this is used they come in different sizes so if you're you know your hat size is seven and a quarter then this is what i'm you know i'm gonna use for you you know i might even go up a size you know just to have extra room by the time we're putting the sweatband that type of stuff you know, it shrink down the size, you know, so, but this is what they use to assess, you know, when, when, when doing the hat making process, same thing with the large manufacturers, they actually have, uh, you know, they use like, uh, aluminum, you know, or iron, uh, you know, also like aluminum and, and metal, you know, uh, iron, uh, uh, hat blocks is what they typically would use industrial grade, industrial size, you know, so they kind of stamps, you know, the, the heat and the steam is already built into the machine and they do multiple hats at a time. They could line them up, maybe do like about 10 at a time, about four or five at a time. It's very exciting to kind of see uh, uh, that process, whatnot. They line them up, you know, they're all the same shape. You know, they all have the same center dent and the same pinches on them and all that stuff. You know, they line them up, you know, the uh, the open crown, you know, the, the hat bodies and stuff. And they... You know, they'll stamp them with their heat and the steam, maybe hold it for about, uh, you know, five, ten minutes, something like that, you know, and, you know, just so that, that it could take real good shape, you know, whatnot, 
of, of, of that once they're stiffening and everything. And then that's it. Okay, comes out, you know, they're, they're pumping out, you know, mass production, uh, produce hats, you know, uh, at a time. So, but this is a do it as you go kind of thing. It's one at a time. This is not a mass production. So, uh, the wood, like I said, for the smaller scale hat makers, this is what we use. You know, we use wood, you know, old school hat blocks that are hand carved and stuff, you know. Uh, this is what we use. So, this represents your head pretty much. Okay, that's how we get the size. So, a hat block. Okay. Uh, we've got the head block out of the way. That's number, uh, what? That's number four. So number five, okay, I have what's called a rounding jack, okay? Folks, while you're watching this video, if you're learning something, make sure you subscribe, like, share, comment with other folks that enjoy the video, okay? And leave, leave in the comments for me. Talk to me. Do you know what a hat block is? You ever heard of a hat block? Okay, this one is the rounding jack. Okay, leave in the comments, do you know what a rounding jack is? Okay, if you're learning something, you're gaining some new knowledge and insights. Okay, this is G the hat guy. All right, well, we use this. This is traditional in the hat, you know, again, behind the scenes in the hat business, whatnot. You know, with the large manufacturers, you know, uh, some of them, they have special cutters that they use. Um, you know, some of the manufacturers, they might use, actually have somebody use this to cut down the size of the brim. Okay. Um, you know, wherever they can, they automate, you know, whatever pro, you know, each step in the hat making process if they can. Okay. Um, but for your independent hat makers, this is what we use. We use the rounding jack. This is traditional. It goes back, you know, decades. Okay. Since, uh, hat making kind of started, you know, but it comes in, the, the form is pretty much, it looks like the letter T. This is pretty much the standard shape of it, but they're different, uh, different versions of it out there too, you know, and, and they're kind of hard to find, you know, uh, they might be a bit more easier to find now, but, uh, when I got into business about eight years ago, they were really tough to find, you know? So anyways, so yeah, you know, this is what we use to, uh, you know, to, uh, cut the brim. Okay. It's got the different sizes, inches on there. If you want to do a six inch brim, five inch, four inch, you know, that type of thing, you know, and and then you tuck right underneath bear with me i'm recording with one hand trying to show you with another hand so you tuck the felt or your or your uh, straw underneath this here you tuck it in there and then you kind of rotate it against the hat block just like so okay just showing you a demo you kind of rotate it just like so against the uh the hat body okay your hat when you want to cut the brim like that around it and you go around and you cut that's how you cut the brim you make sure that the felt or the straw is tucked right underneath here. There's a piece of blade that goes in here, okay, that's inside there. That You you know, that's how you cut. You actually cut the brim to kind of show you a close-up, okay? So rounding jack, that's number five, okay, secret that most folks don't know. Again, unless you, you know, you're in the business or you know somebody that's in the business or you've got some sort of behind-the-scenes stuff, information. So that's the rounding jack or the brim cutter. They actually have smaller brim cutter as well that that uh is available out there but it's not as convenient this one is the rounded jacket standard is a lot more convenient and then i'll give you a bonus number six okay i don't know if you know just uh just kind of extra knowledge they used to use mercury in the felting process in the felting process say for something like this okay like a velour felt they used to use you know whether it's uh a wool or or fur felt they used to use mercury in the felting process back in the day back in the old school days you know during hat making okay that's where the mad hatter syndrome came from they used to use mercury okay in their process but the the, the sense stopped that to my knowledge you know a long time ago now uh but yeah you know i mean they used to use it and and you know a lot of men that used to work in hat making factories back in the day they started going crazy and stuff like that from the inhalation of the mercury, you know, over time, you know, you go to work every day, you're making hats, you've got mercury in the felting, so it kind of affects your health. So those guys were starting to have some, uh, you know, uh, some uh, neurological, uh, you know, uh, uh, type issues, you know, some brain issues and things, you know, and, uh, you know, it was affecting the mental. So that's where the Matt Hatter syndrome comes from. Again, that's just a bonus information for you. If you enjoyed the video, you learned something today from G the Hat Guy, make sure you subscribe to the video, like, share, comment. Also real quick, check out, uh, the Facebook group. Okay. I have a Facebook group. 
trying to get it off the ground, make sure you support. It's called The Hat Lounge by G The Hat Guy. Check out The Hat Lounge on Facebook by G The Hat Guy. Also, check us out on Instagram. It's G The Hat Guy on Instagram. G The Hat Guy. Follow us, like, and share on social media. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Bye.